In this video, we're going to be talking about chromatic number. So first, let's just remind ourselves what chromatic number is. So remember, it's denoted with this chi, this fancy x. <clears throat> and the chromatic number is the smallest number of colors you need to be able to properly color a graph. So for example, if we put color number one on this vertex, remember that two vertices that are adjacent are not allowed to get the same color. So that means that none of these vertices, none of the other vertices in this graph can get color number one. So maybe we get this color number two. But again, right, this is a complete graph, which means that every vertex is going to be adjacent to every other one. So now none of the remaining vertices can get color number two. So this will have to get a new color. This will have to get a new color. This will have to get a new color. And in this case, the chromatic number is going to be five. Because you have to use five distinct colors, one for each vertex. Okay, so let's try another one. So in this case, you just start somewhere and you use a color. And then remember the algorithm we talked about last time, you want to sort of reuse colors when you can. Okay, so you just start coloring and then you reuse low colors if you are allowed to. So for example, this is colored one, so I go to the next vertex um, and it's adjacent, so it needs a new color, color number two. And then when I go to this vertex, right, I can reuse color number one because these aren't adjacent. And then when I go to this vertex, I can reuse color number two because these aren't adjacent. Now when I go to this vertex, I can't reuse colors number one or color number two, so I give this a new color, say color number three, um, and then when I come over here, right, I could reuse color number one for this, and then I can reuse color number two for this. So in this case, the chromatic number is going to be three, because we need three colors to color this. Now using this type of algorithm, assuming you don't make any mistakes along the way, will give you um, the smallest chromatic number, right, if you sort of use this algorithm where you reuse numbers when you can. But we want a way to sort of get information about the chromatic number without actually having to give a coloring of the graph. So that's what the rest of this video is about. And before we talk about that, um, we need a couple of definitions. So first is the idea of independence. A set of vertices S, that's a subset of the vertex set of some graph G, is independent if no two vertices of S are adjacent. So for example, coming back up here, you can see that all the vertices colored number one, those form an independent set because none of the vertices colored number one are going to be adjacent to each other, right? There's no edges connecting them. Similarly, all the vertices colored number two are an independent set, or all the vertices number, colored number three <clears throat> are an independent set. And the independence number of a graph is the size of a maximum independent set. Okay, so we're looking for the maximum number of vertices such that none of them is adjacent to any of the others. <clears throat> and in this case, um, again, we're going to get... So let's say we could take this one, and then this one, and then this one right? For example, all the number twos. And that's going to be the size of a maximum independent set for this particular graph. Um, but it's not always the size of a color class. So in this case, it happens to be that all the vertices colored number two are an in the maximum sized independent set, but that's not always going to be true. So we denote independence with alpha. And in, that, in this case, it's also three. Right? Because, for example, the three vertices colored number one are independent, or the three vertices colored number two are independent. Okay, the next thing we're going to need is the idea of a clique number, or clique number, which is denoted, denoted with an omega, um, so that looks a lot like a W. Um, and that is the order of the largest complete subgraph of G. So remember, let's just go back up. We're going to do another example, but let's just revisit our example in pink here. Remember, a complete graph right, is one where every vertex is adjacent to every other vertex. And a subgraph is a graph you can get from an original graph by just deleting edges and vertices. So for example, remember like the sort of small complete graphs. This is K2, K3, looks like a triangle, K4, looks like this, or like this. Okay, so if you look for these structures in this graph, you can see that K2 is going to be the biggest one of these. There are no triangles, right? There's certainly nothing that looks like this. 
So in this case, the complete or the click number or the cleat number would be two because there are edges, right? That's a K two, just any edge in here. But there's no triangles. There's nothing that looks like this. There's nothing that looks like the green back graph above. That's a K five. So in this case, the click number is just two. Okay, and the independence number and the click number have a lot to do with the chromatic number. So first, let's just do another example where we think about these things. So we want to find, here's our graph G, and we want to find the size of a largest independent set, the size of the largest complete subgraph, and the chromatic number. Okay, so first let's do the independent set. All right, we're looking for a set of vertices, none of which are adjacent to each other. Okay, so you might want to pause the video and just try and answer all of these things for yourself if you want. Okay, well now let's think about how to think about independence number. There are all these vertices, right, around the outside here. There's like a sort of six cycle around the outside. So that means that the largest we could possibly get, and every vertex is on that six cycle. So the largest we could possibly get would be size three if we took every other vertex along that cycle. But we can't actually take those, right? Because for example, if we take this one and this one, now we can't take this one because these two are connected. And so that's this set of three. And similarly, if you take say this one and this one, you can't now take pick up the other one in the set of three that's every other vertex around this cycle. So it turns out in this case, the independence number is just going to be two, right? Because we just saw a couple of sets that were independent. Or like, for example, this one and this one is another one. All right, now let's think about the largest complete subgraph. So we do have K2, right? Just an edge is K2. So do we have K3? Yes. We can see this triangle in here, right? So we could delete all of these vertices and we'd get left with this triangle. Okay, so we have K3, and do we have K4? Well, you can look at this graph, but it turns out you don't, so K3 is the biggest one you have. And then if you want to think about chromatic number, right, we, for now, we're just going to color it. So let's just take our vertex, we'll color this one number one, and because it's adjacent to everything else, none of these can get color number one, so let's color this one number two. And now, because these are in a triangle, right, it's a, this one's adjacent to both one and two, it's gonna need a new color, color number three. But then when we go over here, we can reuse color number two, and then this can reuse color number three. And then down here, we can't use one, we can't use two, we can't use three, it's gonna need a new color, color number four. Okay, so in this case, the chromatic number is four, the independence number is two, the click number is three. All right, so let's think about what's happening here. Um, first of all, let's try and get some lower bounds for the chromatic number. Okay, so for every graph of order n, remember order is the number of vertices, the chromatic number is at least as much as, there are a couple of ways to think about this. Okay, so the first is, let's think about um, this triangle. Okay, so the click number in this graph is three, the click number. And you know that everything in that complete graph has to get a distinct color, right? That's what we were talking about at the very beginning. So for example, everything in this triangle has to have a distinct color. So we know we're going to use at least three. And everything in this triangle has to have a distinct color. So you know you're going to have to use at least three. Okay, and in general, you know the chromatic number is always going to be at least as much as the click number. Right, because every single thing in your clique has to get a different color. So however many vertices there are here, right, then that's going to be at least as many colors as you need. So that's hopefully straightforward to see. Um, and the second one is that if you take the number of vertices and divide by the independence number, that should also be a lower bound. So unlike click number, you can't just take the size of an independence number um, by itself, right? Because think about a cycle. Let's say we have some big cycle like this. 
Well, what's the size of an independence of the independence number of this graph? Well, you can take this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one. It's going to be size 4, right? But you might be able to tell here that the chromatic number is just 2, right? 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So we have to somehow adjust for how big the graph is versus the independence number to get a bound for chromatic number, right? So like in this case, you can plug in 8 divided by 4. Oh, the chromatic number is at least 2, which it is. Okay, so here are some lower bounds for chromatic number, but we also want upper bounds for chromatic number. Okay, so let's think about an upper bound. So for every graph G, we want some number, um, other than just like giving a coloring of G, we want some way to figure out what's going on with the colors. And it turns out that this is bounded by capital delta of G plus 1, where that is the maximum degree of any vertex in G. Okay, so like for example, if we think about this little graph, the maximum degree of any vertex here is 2, so that would tell us that the chromatic number is at most 3. Or if you go up here, in this case, the maximum degree is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So in this case, it tells you that the chromatic number is not more than 6. So that's not a very good bound, really, because this one was 4. Um, but if you think about our algorithm for how we've been coloring graphs, um, if you start at some vertex and give it a color, and then you move along and you repeat when possible, that's where this bound comes from. Because essentially you start with your low numbers, right? Like a 1, and then you go to a 2. And then the worst case scenario is you can't reuse any of the colors that are adjacent to some vertex. Well, how many colors can be adjacent to any vertex in your graph? The maximum degree of that graph. So if you take the maximum degree and add 1, that means that all the vertices adjacent to your sort of um, the biggest degree vertex, so like in this case, you assume that all of these vertices that were adjacent to this vertex have different colors. That's where the delta G comes in. And then you add one for the color you would put on this vertex. Okay, but it turns out we can do just a little bit better than that, right? So I mentioned before that the graph and, I mean, the bound for this red graph, that wasn't very good. It was two off. Um, which is still reasonably good, but um, there's actually something better we can do. So what are the graphs that actually meet this criteria? Um, so for one, let's think about complete graphs. So say we have K4. The chromatic number of K4 is 4, right? Because every single thing is going to need to be on here. And that is exactly maximum degree plus 1, right? Maximum degree is 3, add 1, 4. Okay, so this is an example of a graph that needs this bound. That's the best bound possible. That's what's known as a sharp bound in mathematics. And similarly, if you think about an odd cycle like this, the chromatic number of this is going to be, so 1, 2, 1, 2, oh, but now I can't reuse 1 or 2, so it's going to have to get an extra color, 3. And that generalizes to any odd cycle. The chromatic number is going to be 3, right, because you can just start alternating as you go around the cycle, but if it has odd length, then eventually you're going to get to where you've used both your colors and there's one vertex left to color. And this is another one that fits this criteria, right? The maximum degree here is only 2, but we need 3 colors. So 2 plus 1. But it turns out that these two are actually the only types of graphs for which this bound is the best bound. In general, if you have a graph that's not a complete graph and it's also not an odd cycle, you can just bound it with the maximum degree. So this has been a, uh, a little bit more information about chromatic number and in particular given us some information about how to find chromatic number if you don't want to put an entire coloring on your graph.